Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today I'm studying Psalm 54, and this is the book. And um, in verse 2 of Psalm 54, it's talking about um, Saul, King Saul, setting up to capture King David. Again, Saul was David's father-in-law, and he was jealous of him and um, wanted to um, make David not the king anymore. So at the end, King Saul had to call off the search of the hunt of David because he got word that the Philistines had invaded the land. So just to point out, the Philistines and the Palestinians are not the same people. The Philistines have already been um, wiped out. They are no more. The Palestinians may have taken their name from the Philistines. It's very similar, but they are not um, the same. And I also want to point out that the Psalms were written by King David approximately 3,000 years ago. And at that time, Israel was ruled by the Jews, King David, King Saul, King Solomon, they're all Jewish, they're all Israeli, and Israel 3,000 years ago was owned by Israel and not Palestine. There was no um, even you know, mention of that in the biblical literature, and uh, you could check your, your sources for that. So as an overview, this prayer is um, asking God that he should save all who hope for God's kindness. And um, the author here says that um, you can read and discover this awe-inspiring and wondrous prayer that should be said by each person in times of need. So different psalms are read in different times. Um, some are read when you want to give thanks. Some are read um, when you are in despair. Some are read when you need healing. There's different psalms that are read on different occasions. And so this one is when a person has um, a difficulty, a challenge that they're going through, Psalm 54 is read. I want to point out something that um, you may not have known for those of you who don't read the scriptures in Hebrew. So the original Hebrew that the five books of Moses was written in, which is also known as the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, and also the Book of Prophets, same um, scriptures also, including Psalms and many other books, holy books, were written in Hebrew. Now, the Hebrew language is a challenging language because First of all, in the in in these scriptures, they're not punctuated, so it means that there's no vowels. So if I wanted to say stop that, it would be spelled S T P T H T, and then the reader would have to understand from the context which vowels go where. Furthermore, to make things more difficult, the scriptures are also not punctuated, so there's no commas. There's no periods and there's no question marks and there's no, um, uh, what's it called? Quotation marks. So you don't know who is saying what, when the run on sentences end, what is a question and so forth. So as you can imagine, that would mean that deciphering scriptures could be very challenging because something that could be a question may look like a statement and vice versa and depending on where you punctuate the the, the verse could take on a whole different meaning um so that that means that there's many many different um commentaries and understandings and explanations and we sometimes don't know which one is the right one. So the reason why I'm mentioning this now is because in what is for me verse two of this Psalm, there is a word which to me denotes a question, whereas in some translations, instead of a question, they have it as a statement. And in the book that I'm reading out of, it has it even as an exclamation. So. Uh, I mentioned before in the Psalms that in the, a lot of the English translations, the verses are numbered differently because in the Hebrew, the first line, which for me in the Hebrew book is verse one, is in a lot of the English translations, the Christian translations, they make verse one into the title 
And in, the, in Psalm 54, they even have verse 2 as part of the title. And then, the, and then they have the verses starting with verse 1. So for example, I'm looking at the BibleGateway.com website at the New International Version translation. There's like 60 different translations of the, of the Psalms in, in this website. It's amazing. It's a great resource. Um, and I love utilizing it. So it, like I said, the first two lines are part of the title. And then for me, what is uh, verse three is for them verse one. So I'm just going to read it. So verse one in the new, um, what is it? New international version is save me, O God, by your name, vindicate me by your might. So in my other book that I'm using, it says, Oh God, deliver me by your name and vindicate me by your might. So the word that for vindicate is tadineni in Hebrew. Um, so it's so interesting because in Hebrew, you get so much information from one word. So the ta in the beginning tells us that it's future tense, like so in the future. And then the dean is the um, the noun, or sorry, it's the verb. Dean means to judge. Dayan is a judge. And um, ni at the end means me. So in the future, judge me. So it's, it's translated as vindicate me. So what it's really telling us is that David is asking God to judge him favorably so that God will pay back his enemies for what they have done to him. So all of that is one word, tadineni. Um, and then what I was talking about before about the punctuation is actually from the verse before that, which for me is verse two, and for some of the English translations is still part of the title. So um, let me just read that verse. So verse two, um, it's the second part. It says, behold, David is hiding among us. And that's an exclamation and a quotation in my book. Uh, but the Hebrew is, hello, David, mistater imanu. And hello, I've always learned when I was a kid learning the Bible that that is a question hello isn't david hiding among us and indeed the new international version also translates it as a question is not david hiding among us and then i i also pulled up the international children's bible and this one is as a statement. It says, we think David is hiding among our people. So there's so many different interpretations because of the lack of um, punctuation and um, it, it could go so many different ways. But also just to mention um, in modern Hebrew, when people pick up the phone in Israel, they say, Alo, that means hello, you know, who's there? It's a question. Um, so it's so interesting how one word, hello, um, here it's translated as behold, but in other places isn't. And I actually would agree with the translations that, that are saying, isn't David hiding among us? Or, um, yeah, because to me, the hello is a question, but but it's hard to know because there's actually no question mark. And and I just want to mention this because, like, um, as you know, I'm Jewish, and this is like a Jewish translation. And even though I'm Jewish, I'm disagreeing with the Jewish translation, and I'm agreeing with what I think is a Christian translation. So I just want to point out that you know, some people might assume that just because I'm Israeli, I was born in Israel, that I therefore am biased and agree with everything that Israel is doing because uh, of my nationality. But, um, you know, Israeli people are very stubborn people. And there's a lot of Israeli people that actually oppose what the Israel Israeli government does and is doing. Um, their, their responses and reactions to various political situations include including the current crisis and war, but it doesn't mean that just because I'm I'm Israeli, I agree with everything going on in Israel or disagree, just like a person in America um, may or may not like the current administration. So 
um, in other words, like don't don't judge a person by what you assume their biases may or may not be. All right, so let's get back to business. Um, it's talking about in verse two, David's talking about how he needed instrumental music to raise his spirits. And that's because when a person is in a state of joy, they're able to receive wisdom. There is um, the Shrina, which is the divine feminine presence, what, which rests with a person when they are happy. And this is what allows a person to be in a state of prophecy or a high state of intuition and clarity and wisdom. However, the Shrina, the divine feminine presence, does not rest with a person when they are angry or depressed. So it's very important to always have a good and positive and upbeat attitude um, for our own benefit. Okay, verse seven talks about um, destroy them, David's enemies, in accordance with your faithfulness. And it's talking about um, how God pledged to punish gossipers and murderers. So why do we put gossipers and murderers in the same uh, boat? So because go gossip, as you know, is also a, a form of libel or slander when you do character assassination it's as if you're killing the person because character assassination can affect somebody's livelihood and it, it can affect obviously their reputation and you've basically killed the person whether or not that information is true is irrelevant so gossiping is a, a very very um hefty sin okay so try to avoid gossip as as much as possible um, so this is already a very lengthy uh, video, and I'm sorry, I try to keep them very brief. Um, and I just want to add one more thing, is that Rashi, the commentator on these Psalms and a lot of scriptures, um, has his whole unique, different kind of alphabet. And I think the reason why his, his writing is different from the Hebrew is so that people don't mistake his commentary with the actual scriptures. So thanks for watching today. I hope you got something out of it. Um, the take home message is to avoid gossiping and to um, always be joyful as much as possible. And um, whenever you're in a state of depression or anger, let it pass quickly. Don't stay, don't get stuck in that emotion. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye.